I had a pretty interesting week, right? Where I went kind of viral on social media. Imagine, little old me, little old Agostino, right? This insignificant peon of a person, right? This black knight, this gorilla, this um hunk, this flipping toad, this monster, right? This Romero, this Romeo, this um this uh, loser, this neek, this bad boy, this gangster, all those things that people call me. Little old me, little old me, little old Agostino managed to go viral. And you're wondering, Agostino, what do you go viral for? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked, my lovely listeners. That, that reminds me of the uh, of sort of the the meme or the joke going around lately of if you if you're employer gives you the the all black think pad you're never getting fired and if your employer gives you the <laughs> uh the macbook air or That's the funny. ipad your your job is about as secure as uh rfk's brain to this worm particular tweet um the person who i quote tweeted for some reason has disabled the tweets i can't really see it on my computer but sometimes i can see it on my phone so it's annoying so i can't get a live play-by-play but at the last time of checking, at the last time of checking, the tweet specifically had, if we're zooming in here, it had 9.3 million views. And I think it was picked up by a few other blog platforms on Instagram, but I'm not really using Instagram these days. But I had people, you know, letting me know that, oh, shit, I saw your thing on some page and shit. And people are, you know, reaching out and pretending I'm famous and stuff, which is obviously dumb. It's just a dumb fucking tweet I set out there. But essentially the tweet, it features a guy who posted a picture of his laptop and it's one of those old ThinkPads, right? And he says on it, LOL, look at the laptop they gave me at my new job. And I quote tweeted it and said, if your new workplace hands you a ThinkPad, you basically have a job for life. But if they give you a MacBook Air, you have the rest of your, you and the rest of your team could get fired next week. And this obviously comes from personal experience. It's maybe a good observation, maybe a good joke there, but this obviously comes from personal experience. And it was a big wake up call for me because I kind of was one of those type of people who maybe looked down on jobs where they would give you a Dell ThinkPad. I looked down on those type of jobs. I always wanted to be in the startup, in like a really fancy ad agency, working for a premium sportswear company, maybe a streetwear company, maybe a fashion company, advertising, marketing, whatever, right? And usually all those places, they always give you a MacBook Air or something along those kind of lines. Or maybe if you develop, you might get a MacBook Pro, but usually it's Apple way. One particular company I worked for actually, big up Mastered, RIP to Mastered, you're gone but never forgotten. They actually gave you a choice at Mastered. You could actually, I think it was actually free choices, if I'm not mistaken. I think I tweeted and said it was two, but I think it might have been free. I think at Mastered, you could either choose from a Windows um, laptop, a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. The Pro you have to kind of like, you know, put in a... Um, request and basically fight your case for it but essentially most of the time you got it and they also gave you a license for photoshop um, that's basically how I got to use photoshop a lot I'm not gonna lie no actually I take that back that's not true I actually had the cracked version of photoshop on my old white macbook remember when macbooks when they had that white one so I had that white macbook that I fucking beat into the ground that was my absolute baby I burned and that was a time as well I started DJing I was able to burn cds on that laptop it kind of started my DJ career on there I started trying to produce a little bit on there, a little bit of video, video editing, but most of my Photoshop quote unquote skills came from using that laptop. Anyway, long story short, that's the only that's the only thing you kind of get. So there's a difference between usually, you know, Dell laptop ThinkPads are usually reserved for like what you deem to be boring jobs, maybe working for the council, maybe working at some sort of recruitment firm or whatever. Something that wasn't the most creative, but obviously um, was a job that you had. And then with the startup thing, you maybe got more empowered. It was maybe more fancy. Um, like I said, you know, whenever I think of like at MacBook Airs, I'm thinking of offices filled with, I forgot what they were called, but in, in startups, they had these like black, I think it was a brand. I think they're called like bean bags. I forgot what they were called. Let me see if I can find them. Black bean bags. There was this particular brand that all the startups had in their corner. They're like a black bean bag chair thing. And you could kind of move them around. Um, it was it was called a particular name, so I'm not too sure. It had like a red label on the side, and they were black, and you could kind of like move them around. It was like a company that did these things. I forgot what the actual name of it was called, but uh, but if you know, you know what I'm talking about. But every startup I worked at would have a few of these in the corner, so you could like sit and lie down and and do that. They'd have a ping pong table, right? They'd have like an outdoor patio area type of thing, right? Um, let's just write, let's just write startup offices. So you'll see the flipping difference, right? Startup offices. 
And I think a good example of a startup office is a WeWork. WeWork is basically what startups all are kind of aiming to kind of go towards, but obviously in a bigger scale where you have like, you know, WeWork had like a person downstairs who would serve you beer. They had like a coffee shop. They had a pastry bit. They had little rooms where you could do, you know, presentations, movies, um, just all these nice little plush amenities and shit. But if you had a Dell ThinkPad, most likely your office just looked very cool, very sterile, very dry, almost depressing, just rows and rows of tables full of computers. But obviously the benefit of all that stuff, you don't get fancy bean bags, you don't get drinks on Friday, um, you don't get, you know, you don't get a lot of the, you know, little added benefits you'd get working for a startup. But what you do get is job security. You get job security and sometimes you actually get decent career progression. I sometimes think the whole startup thing about, oh, when you work in startups, you have way more ownership, way more um, responsibility on certain projects. You can kind of steer the ship. You, you can kind of steer your career in the direction that you want. I've worked in startups where someone who's worked in sales moved to working in customer service. Someone who worked in customer service went to marketing. Like it's, quite, it's more fluid, right? There's more areas to kind of move around. But I also think that's a bit of a myth. In the same way that it's a myth in startup world for you to work in a space where there's no delineation of like um departments there's no like rooms there's no doors everything is kind of open plan to kind of foster this idea of collaboration but it doesn't actually do that what it actually does is create more distraction you don't get work done um it, it kind of messes up the hierarchy as well a little bit it's just not the best thing for like um what you call it for it's not the best thing for you to get the job done day to day you're kind of distracted all the time. You're easily kind of led astray somewhere else. You have other people talking. It's just not the best place to focus. So I actually do provide, I actually do prefer the time that I was working in a far more sterile, in a far more dry, in a far more boring environment. Like I was working in Collart, this place where they basically were a big art materials manufacturer. And I was working there. That was, that was like my first internship I kind of had in an office. And I think at that time, they must have been paying me like, I'm not even going to lie. It might have been like 12 grand a year or something, right? After taxes, that's just underneath like 900 pound a month. And then my rent at the time was 600 pound. So I had like 300 odd pound to play with, right? Uh, you know, no, not 300, but exactly. Well, not in minus bills. So I had not that much to play with, which is funny when I think about it because that was also the time when I went out the most. And I, and I think sometimes now that I have more disposable income, now that I kind of can do my own thing, and I live alone and stuff and whatever, I can kind of go, you know, do what I want and whatever. I'm not going out as much. But when I was at home and I wasn't earning as much, I was always going out. Maybe there was a part of me that kind of wanted to run away from home. But I think also a big part of it was just that you do way more with little. I think in general, you do way more with the little that you have. And I think I was really, really that kind of guy that would exhaust, you know, the, the hell out of a 20 pound note. So that went obviously quite far. So of course, that's, all, that, that's quite good. But I think in general, this kind of like pro career progression thing is kind of, you know, again, over egged in startups because sometimes the lines can be blurred. Like I've also worked in startups where sometimes they promise you the world and never deliver. Whereas I think working for a place where they give you a think pad, you will know quick, pretty quickly whether you can progress or not. You won't get sold any dreams. You'll realize quite fast. I think in the startups, they'll dangle the carrot in front of you. You'll have this idea because you have ownership and because you're taking it on, you'll end up working way more hours. There won't really be a clear... I think with startups, personally for me, there is no clear delineation between your personal and your fucking work life. Sometimes they can bleed into each other. You're answering calls at 8 p. No, you're still at work at 8 p.m. You're answering calls at 8 a.m. in the morning before you get to work. It can be a little bit blurry and a bit messy, whereas working for a place where they give you a ThinkPad... You start at nine, you end at five or six, and that's basically it. If you don't get your thing done by the end of the day, just pick up in the morning. You know, that kind of thing that you, you get given that sort of responsibility. But I guess the only bad thing about working in, in a ThinkPad environment is that if you do fuck up, there's a lot more micromanagement. I found, especially even from my case, sometimes when you don't start the job on fire and they think that you're maybe lacking, especially if you have one year past your probation, they'll start micromanaging you way more. And then that will sometimes make you feel a little bit inadequate. You might feel like you're not being trusted. You might just feel shitty and dumb, whatever. And that could be hard to kind of get over. Obviously, if you, you know, lower your, you, you know, have a bit of humility and make sure that, you know, you realize that it's not that big of a deal. And if you just improve your workflow and you just make sure your output's good, they're going to leave you alone but that can be a hard to deal with whereas in startups you can get away with doing jack shit 
in general. You can start in a startup, just be the fucking... I've done it before in my life and I can uh, attest to it. I've definitely been a, a personality hire at a couple startups, maybe more, where I've never probably done that much great work. But because I was a good, positive, flipping, you know, influence around the office, they just kept me around for that sake. But I also think that's not the best way to go about living or the best way to go about working, especially if you want to progress your career. You're not really learning good habits. Um, it's not going to really stand you in good stead when you do go to another company where they don't really run that short shit because every place has a different type of, you know, working environment and culture. And some places they just don't play. There is no work, you know, there is no fucking personality hire. Everyone kind of earns their fucking, you know, earns their bread there. So you kind of have to acquiesce to that. But in general... I think the older you get, you start to appreciate the pros and cons of either working in a startup or working in a dry think pad corporation type of place. But I think overall, if I had to go back in time and if I was focused, like now I'm obviously focused on doing my own thing. I'm focused on making this content thing full time. I'm focused on making the DJ thing work out. I'm focused long term on opening my own club, obviously in the process of writing a book at the moment. I've got all these things I want to do. So having a job job that I'm kind of progressing up the ladder and stuff isn't my main priority. But if it was, I would definitely pick working in a dry ass government job, local council, working for some energy supplier, working for some recruitment, whatever it may be that will give me a think pad because that job security is everything. Because I can't tell you how nerve wracking it is. And again, this is me many years after the fact but it's funny that all the places that i worked at that were the coolest i think of the nike job i had i think of the flipping job i had at masters where i was traveling the world and shit all of those jobs i had were the ones that had the worst job security at nike we were kind of employed there but not really when we got paid we got paid through this other company and you have to you have to invoice them and sometimes they wouldn't pay you on time luckily at that time i was living at home Luckily, I was living at home. Luckily, I didn't have to pay rent or anything. Or, you know, I did have a, like a monthly thing I had to pay on a particular date. Obviously, I'd give some money back to the house. But it wasn't like, a, oh, if you don't pay by this date, you get chucked out. But the amount of times when I was working at Nike where my payment would come late, I'd invoice them. And my payment would come late all the fucking time. And it was a really important time for me to have that experience. Because I'm not sure about you guys, but if you, you know, if you work within a creative field, entertainment field, especially when you start off, for me anyway, personally, I was never lucky enough to work freelance and have that be the thing that was my made breadwinner. No, or the, the, the thing that I was never lucky enough to work freelance where it paid all my wages, where it paid all my bills. I kind of had to always work a regular, regular job and then do my my creative stuff on the side. But whenever when I was you know when I wanted to do it, I had friends that were doing it that were fortunate enough to do that. And I was, always a, I was always a bit jealous, like, fuck, man. I wish I could be that person. I wish I could be freelancing and do my own thing and sitting in the Ace Hotel on my little laptop and doing my thing or whatever it may be or going to Shoreditch House and doing my thing over there or whatever. And, you know, just being around, carrying your fucking MacBook and looking all cool. But the thing that people don't tell you about working freelance is the money. Invoicing people to get paid, there's nothing more nerve-wracking than that. I swear to God, that kind of anxiety, like, and again, I was, I was living at home. So I'm lucky, I'm lucky it's not now because I don't know how I'd be able to deal with it not, you know, not having received because I think there was one particular time I was working at Nike, we hadn't been paid for like three months, maybe four. Obviously when it all comes, it's amazing, it's a big lump sum but as you guys know, if you don't get paid on time and you get paid in, in as a lump sum four months later, you still have those bills that you didn't pay four months ago and now all of a sudden you got this big lump of money you can't really budget it correctly and you end up blowing it far quicker than if you would have just got paid, you know, per month as you should have got paid. And I don't think there was one time, I think there might have been one time, maybe when the store opened that we got paid on time, maybe like two months back to back and then that was it. Every other month was late, 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 late or a big gap of four months. That kind of anxiety is just, I don't recommend it to anybody. So that's why if I could go back in time, no, if, if, if I had to get a normal career job now and look to kind of progress up and kind of be a, a regular adult and get like a, you know, and build up my savings account and purchase a house and maybe start a family and buy a car, I would definitely go in the direction where they'd give me a ThinkPad because where I, a place where I'd get a ThinkPad, I'd be more than sure, maybe let's say 80% certain that I'd have that job at least for a year. Because with startups, you can't even think a year ahead. You can't. I had the unlucky, I had such an unlucky period one time where I was working at Depop. I'm sure most of you guys know what Depop is, right? It's like a marketplace for vintage clothes and shit. Um, it's basically like the Gen Z version of fucking eBay. 
I was working at Depop and I was working there and I didn't really feel like there was any career progression. Unfortunately, Depop's kind of culture at the time. Maybe it was my personality. I don't really know, but I didn't feel like I had the opportunity to move into another team. And the people on the other team, especially the marketing team, they were, you know, they were kind of wankers to be fair. Um, there'll come some people there who I liked, but this particular lady that moved there that became the head of the team there, she was very snobby, kind of up her own ass. And it, it was unfortunate too at Depot because for a while, we had a really cool crew of people there, employees that worked there. But then over time, people obviously became really popular and whatever. And then we started, you know, the company, sorry, we, they started hiring way more cooler kids and cooler kids with better CVs, with a bit of clout. They come with their own little attitude and, you know, bravado and shit. And it really did change the vibe of the office. I, I That's what I noticed anyway. It became like a, it became like any other cool place you'd work at. I'd imagine if you work at ID Magazine or you worked at some fucking creative studio, it had that kind of unnecessary, pretentious, snobby vibe. So I didn't really want to work in a marketing team. Now, again, I'm saying this, most likely they wouldn't have taken me anyway. Cool, it is what it is. But I didn't really feel like there's any progression. But I was working pretty well in the, you know, community support, customer support service area. I was doing a pretty good job there. Um, I was, you know, all right. But then I decided after a year and a half, oh, let me change jobs. And I didn't need to change. Depop, we, I was working at Depop when they used to be at this office called Zetland House in Old Street. Then they moved their offices to the office they got now, which is near like Liverpool Street. It's like a really spanky brand new office that they kind of built out. Everybody was really hyped about it because they really made it as a place to kind of chill. Um, let me see if I can get the pictures up on here. It's a really nice office, to be fair. It's got like this massive, nice pyramid thing on the front where you can sit right? Like, as you can see from the pictures, it's a really well done office. They've got a really nice reception area, a nice little pyramid area here in the, in the corner where you can sit, great meeting rooms, loads of places to sit and eat and shit. Just a nice cozy type of environment, right? They moved into this office and we'd only been in there for like six months. But I decided in my great wisdom, oh, I need to, I need more. The salary was too low, working community support. I needed more autonomy. I needed more, I needed more like responsibility. I needed to do my own thing. So I decided to apply for some social media manager role at this other startup. And I left myself. I time my resignation, had the whole leaving party thing. It was pretty cool. I moved to this new fucking startup and guess what happens? Guess my fucking bad luck. I moved to this new startup, motherfuckers. And guess what happens? Yeah, but you guessed it. The startup goes fucking bankrupt. I was there three months only after leaving Depop. Three months. And just before Christmas as well. Just before fucking Christmas, I went on I went on a little staycation to Manchester to have a have a good time, chill out and whatnot. Um book myself a room at the fucking Easy Jet. I've you know Easy Hotel, right? They have like an easy hotel there. Absolutely horrendous. Don't go there, by the way. Pay money for a regular hotel. That easy hotel is fucking terrible. And then, I, and then I was waiting for my money to come through that weekend to actually have extra money to spend when I was in Manchester and it didn't come through. And then I went on the fucking, you know, slack of the company and that's when everyone was just going off. I was like, oh no, my bad luck. I literally left a solid, comfortable role, went somewhere else to risk it all and I risked it and now the place is going up in flames and it took us a while to get our money. The company went bankrupt. We had to kind of, I think, no, so, I guess the term is insolvent. And then you have to go through the government thing to get your money because it's unpaid wages. And that comes through super late. I think we got our money like six months later. And we only got our money or I got my money through some very nefarious tactics. Like I was on demon time. Like anything you're imagining, I did. And worse, do you know what I mean? So I was, I was playing with fire. I probably could have got arrested for that shit, the stuff that I did. But luckily that didn't happen. Um, But all of that happened because I went to like, a startup where they, they they sold me a dream. Like, yeah, you're going to be leading the marketing team. You're going to be responsible for telling this story, um, inspiring people, connect, blah, 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 blah. I got a MacBook Air. I was able to walk in at nine in my cool clothes in this little office next to, um, I think, Holborn or something. It was like a co-working space and shit. Like, all this cool shit ne next to, like, and I think it was near, like, some area where you could get, like, street food uh, during the... During the week, they had like a little street where little stands were there and stuff. So all these cool, amazing things that tick off the boxes. But job security, whew, out of the window. Because after three months of being there, the company was kaput. I only really got two whole full payments. The third month, I didn't get. I had to wait for it after the fucking, you know, deliberation or whatever else it went on. So that was why after that, I was like, oh, I had way more respect for ThinkPad jobs because a ThinkPad job would have never done me that dirty. A ThinkPad job would have given me a couple of months heads up. A ThinkPad job probably wouldn't have hired anybody because I'm led to believe, especially nowadays, thinking back at it, 
there's no way they didn't know that they were on their last legs. But they still hired me. And why they hired me? They didn't hire me because I was fucking amazing. They hired me because they wanted to look like... Because with startup, in startup worlds, in order to receive more investment, you kind of have to increase your employee numbers because it basically looks like you have demand or the app is going well or whatever the product you're selling. Whatever you're doing is succeeding, which is why you need more help and you hire more employees. So if you have more employees, especially if they're diverse, I tick the boxes, um, you can look like you're doing good things and then you can kind of use that to raise a, another round of investment. So that's essentially why I got hired for. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know at the time, but afterwards I was thinking, yeah, that's true. Like there's no way they didn't know the company was on its last legs. So I learned a lot from that experience of like, okay, cool. If you want that autonomy, if you want that cash, if you want that coolness factor, if you want to look like a big shot with your little MacBook and under your under your armpit, walking into Pret a Manger and ordering your fucking you know black coffee and shit, you, you're gonna it's gonna come with some risk. If you if you want beers every Wednesday, if you want fucking pizza on Fridays, ping pong tables, um, grassy lawns on your rooftop that you can sit outside and lounge on and stuff, it's gonna come with some job in in insecurity security yeah insecurity you're gonna it's gonna be all over the place so respect all jobs all jobs are created equal as long as they can pay your way forward as long as they can support you support your family keep a roof over your head keep warm clothes on your back all that good shit support them or you know respect them if you are in a creative field respect that job even more so especially if it's allowing you to do the stuff you want to do outside of work don't take it for granted like i used to and think you are kind of better than the role or i don't need to do this blah, blah, blah. No, no 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 have a good working attitude because if anything having a good working attitude at your job that you don't actually like will actually translate into the stuff that you like to do because you just have good work ethic in general and that's obviously something that you don't you shouldn't be turning on and off depending on what you're doing um, you should do everything with excellence doesn't matter if you're fucking grocery shopping doesn't matter if you're fucking cutting your own hair everything should be done to a level of excellence it shouldn't be like oh that's just that's, that's enough that's okay it should always be excellent and then that also should translate to your job so happy i went kind of viral um so big up everybody that saw it and liked it and left left me comments and shit i think at, at last fucking check I had over 586 fucking replies. My notifications were going crazy. I felt like I was getting cancelled for saying fucking the F word or something. So that was pretty cool. And um, big up everybody out there that saw it. 